So look at the same question. Uh, that's right. So <clears throat> I'm going to use the change rule again. But I'm going to use the change rule now in the opposite direction straight away. So before, before, in my previous solution, remember what I said? I said the fr derivative, it's fx times xr plus fy times yr. Well, why can't we do it directly for the fx now? So if I want to, if I want to see fxy in terms of fr theta, why don't I just say by the chain rule again that fx, fx, is the derivative of fr times r by x. So you see I'm doing the chain rule in the opposite direction straight away. And then plus f theta times theta or x. Like this. That's a chain rule. And the same line for the f of y derivative. You don't have this the other slide in front of you right now, but you took notes, and I'll, I'll make my uploads, even though I'm a little behind on, behind on the uploads right now, but eventually that I'll make my uploads. Put these two slides together next to each other and see the difference. Oh, I, I, I can, yeah, well, you have your notes. You can compare that. Basically, we almost finished the question, right? Look at this, fx and fy, straight through fr and f theta, fr and f theta. But we almost finished the question. It almost actually takes significant time to be, to be removed from this sentence. Because this rx and theta x is something we no longer can strictly uh, directly see from here. Before, it was x by r and x by theta, which comes, I mean, it's a direct computation of the derivative. This time, it is not. How can you see r by x from here? Solved it. How do you solve it? <laughs> okay, and? Yeah, but theta also depends on x, right? You will end up with the chain rule, sort of. Like, I mean, yes, you can divide x by cos. You will differentiate by x. It will be like a quotient rule, right? The determinant will be simple. It's x by x is 1. But the, the uh, denominator will be cos theta, which is not a constant, right? It depends on, on, on x. Yes, yes. Well, that's, 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 that's why I want to show you this slide. And the inverse functions, as you suggested, will be the, the, place, the way to do it. But it's a little bit different to the way you, you did the implicit differentiation in the first year. Look at this. So in principle, yes, you're correct. We can take these two identities, and we can solve for r and for theta. We can. Some of you can even find the explicit formulae for that solutions. But I'm not going to do that. So in principle, I can solve for r and for theta from these two lines. And if, if I finish this solution, I can take from here the derivative rx, ry, theta x, and theta y, which I'm missing to complete these two lines. So in principle, you can do that. Some of you may even finish this actually, I mean, finding this formula. But I'm not going to do that. Because I don't need to do that to find these missing factors here, these factors. Instead, I'm going to follow this implicit differentiation trick you did a few times in the first year. But this time, it will be implicit differentiation, which involves multiple arguments. And that's why it will be chain rule with multiple arguments. Look at this. Look what I'm going to say. So you can call this the inverse polar map, right? It just does the opposite. Mapping. Look what I'm going to say. Uh, so imagine I have this inverse maps. If I put these maps in here and in here, in here and in here, I will end up with the correct numerical identities, right? So if I put them there, here it is. That will be correct numerical identity. See? So you see, I replace my R with this imaginary, well, that's not I want to say imaginary solution, but it has nothing to do with the complex numbers, of course. It's a solution which we don't have, but which, in principle, we may have it. With some effort, we can discover that solution. Right? And this triple lines just means it's true for every X and Y. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to differentiate these two lines four times. Twice for, for X and twice for Y. So here it is. If I apply x differentiation, first line, second line, look what happens. 
x differentiation here is just 1. x differentiation here is Rx. This one we're looking for. Well, this is a product rule, right? We have to use the product rule and the chain rule at the same time. So Rx times cos, then goes R, and then negative sign theta Rx. If I apply dx derivative for the second line here, 0 on the left-hand side, because y is independent of x. Then here the product rule again. It's my Rx, the one we're looking for. Sine theta, r times cos theta, and theta x. That's another one we're looking for. At this stage, if I ask you, remember, we're looking for this Rx and looking for this theta x. At this stage, if I ask you how to find them, you will tell me. What will you tell me? We can. So it's another system of linear equations with two unknowns. We can solve again. Well, given that we use the Kramer's rule on my on my slide before, and given that the principal determinant in this system, if you follow Kramer's rule again, will be identical to the principal determinant from the slide before, I'll use the Kramer's rule. If I solve this by Kramer's rule, the principal determinant is R. You see, I use the dot to hit these details which are present on the slide before. Principal determinant, cos, sine, r negative sine, r cos. So it, it is actually r. The other two determinants, delta 1, is just this one. Remember, to, delta 1 is the one where you replace the first column by the right-hand side. And again, I use the term right-hand side because yeah, that's, that's in the system of linear equations universe. That's what we call the right-hand side. And delta 2, right in here. And so my Rx takes this form, and theta x takes this form. It's a quotient of delta 1 by delta for Rx, and the delta 2 by delta for theta x. Now the other two the, the other two factors we're looking for are uh, r by y and theta by y. They will come up from the similar procedure if I use the second differentiation by y. If I differentiate these two lines by y now, and I do this, look at this. So if I use my d by dy differentiation on the first line here, on the first line here it's zero on the left hand side because x is independent of y. That's the product rule and the chain rule together. These are my two unknowns. We need it to finish this computation. And that's the second line where the y differential is applied. It's another two systems with two, un two systems. Of, I'm sorry. It's another two linear equations with two unknowns, which we can solve. If you don't like Kramer's rule, you can solve any other way. But in these circumstances, the Kramer's rule is the best, the quickest way to solve this, especially because you see when you go for delta 1, delta 2, you sub in one zero column, which makes evaluation of the determinant is a thing which comes from the top of your head. So if I use the Kramer's, if I use the Kramer's here, Again, the principal determinant here, look at this. It's a product across this diagonal, right? Cos theta by r cos theta. It's r, sin, uh, it's r cos square theta. And plus r uh, sine square theta, just r. And two other determinants, they're like this. If you don't like Kramer's rule, you can solve it any other way. But if you don't have it in your, in your set of tools of solving of system of linear equations, you should add it there. Sometimes it save, saves lots of times. Yes, please. Yes, that's right. Thank you. It's a type. Yes. It is theta y, of course. It's a y derivative here. Thank you. Uh, and that's it. So you take the quotients, delta 1 by delta, that delivers your first unknown, ry. You take the second quotient, delta 2 by delta, that's the second unknown, theta y. This is how you do implicit differentiation with the functions of multiple variables, with the maps, I'm sorry, of multiple variables. So not only the you have multiple variables, but the look back here. 
the values are also two-dimensional here. It's not an easy process. It's a, it requires to see lots of solutions of system of linear equations, but in principle, it's a doable process. And that allow, we see that that allow us to, uh, allowed us to find this Rx, Ry, theta Rx, theta Y without knowing these functions explicitly. These functions are not easy to present, as a matter of fact. I mean, uh, R function probably is all right because it's just x squared plus y squared under the square root. It's just a distance. But theta function, this theta function, it's a tricky one because it requires the arctan, and you need to split this into quadrants. It's, it's not an easy function. You can try to solve this directly. It's like the formula for the argument of a complex number. It's not a simple formula. It's two state, like a two closest formula with the different cases. So even if you solve this directly, finding that derivative, it's not easy. And part in, is, as it looks like, if you look at if you live into this, you, we don't need that. We don't need we don't need to know the direct formula for these two. Well, now if you substitute what we found, if you substitute what we found into these two formulae, you will end up with the result we found on my other slide. 